first experience that I had coming to Barcelona could have been my last. Um, I came here and was supposed to play, I think, at the Olympic Village or something, which is probably around here, uh, for a really big party. And no one came to the airport to pick me up at all. No one. And uh, I had the first flight out in the morning. And I couldn't get to the city because there were no taxis because I waited like an hour and a half and then there was nothing there. So I slept at the airport on the bench for four hours and then I woke up and then the flight I was waiting for had been cancelled. The next flight was eight hours later that they could put me on and I was in the point of crying because it was just like awful. So I almost never ever came back. But after that, I did come back, thankfully, and after that, I've had a great time here ever since. I mean, I've been coming here, this is probably like, maybe my 80th time coming to Barcelona, maybe. It's just a vibe, I think I've been here so many times now. I think those guys are geniuses, actually, because they just have this ability of doing really cool underground stuff, but also, with a little pinch of commerciality, but not in an obvious way. You know, like push the button, stuff like that. It's just an ama it's the kind of crossover track that anyone, I think, should be happy to hear. So working with the Chemical Brothers and Depeche Mode and people like that at, at a distance is always is, is an amazing privilege. But working with people in the studio doesn't happen very often with me and only really happened in the last, uh, last album, in Devil's Advocate. And uh, that would have been with Chicks on Speed, which is, of course, fun. And then with Mr. Liff as well, and he came into the studio as well, and that was that was fun. But you know, actually working with people doesn't happen that often. It's always at a distance with audio files. With with techno, techno has changed quite dramatically uh, because of technology. Uh, you know, we've always pushed for technology to change. We've always embraced it, and we we drive. It further forward with, with audio technology and now it's so much fun to work with so on that level it's changed a lot um, musically the people that still do it and the people that play um, on Negros unfortunately not this year but the people that play at Aquacella uh, people that play at uh, Loft uh, people that play at uh, Florida 135 uh, all the clubs that are still we play they still play the good music um, but of course there's uh, uh, not even a new generation, but there's an old generation that obviously seems to need money um, more than they, they do artistry, so they've moved themselves further forward towards commerciality, but then try and package it as something credible, which the people that care about music, they don't see that as credible at all. They just see it as, as just real sell-out, crossover, mainstream, uh, douchebag music, really. Uh, so there's a lot of that around. Um, as for the new generation of DJs, there's always going to be DJs of the new generation that I can appreciate and there's always going to be ones that I don't really understand where they're coming from but that's true all the time of everything um, so it, you know they have to make their own way uh, with Tomorrowland it's a Belgian version of id and uh, they invited me about four years ago they've been trying for a while before and they gave me my own stage to uh, have the artists on there. And almost every year I've had 100% of choice. Uh, sometimes there's a little bit of input from the organization. Uh, but most of the time we see eye to eye and it's not a problem. Um, there's always like a, a, like a compromise whenever you do um, uh, a lineup because it's, uh, it's on availability. Does it suit the environment? Does it suit the area? So whatever, it, whatever stage you do, there's always a compromise, always. And it's always a tricky thing to get right. Uh, but with Tomorrowland, you know, I'm, I feel blessed because it's a very commercial festival. Um, there's a lot of great commercial talent, if you love that commercial talent. Uh, and yet there's, there, there's my stage as well. And uh, it feels, I feel kind of special about that, actually, to be honest. It's fun. I think it's sad because uh, I never understood why people like David Guetta are on there. And then uh, this, this year, they actually wanted to go back to the, the roots of what Montenegro was all about. And I was really happy for that. Because Montenegro has always been this amazing festival in the middle of nowhere that just had the most incredible cross-section of great music from 
you know, like from, from some hip hop even, like Snoop Dogg when he was good, uh, to to um, uh, to Front Two Four Two, so some of the Heritage acts, to some of the really really cool um, main main name acts that were in techno and electro, and then I think for a few years, like it still had ninety percent of that, but then ten percent seemed a bit confused and it seemed to take away from that. So I was really excited about this year because it was going to be completely back to the roots, just back to about the music and I think it would have done really 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 well actually uh, I understand all the reasons why it didn't happen and I actually think it was a very brave decision that they did it when they did it and I think it was the right decision to do it when they did it because if they had waited and waited and waited till a decision was made for them and it which could have gone either way there could have been a lot of people that made travel plans because you know buying a ticket is very easy for a good organization to give back the money for a ticket but it's not easy for a good organisation to say, well, you bought plane tickets, because a lot of people fly from different countries from Italy to come here. You bought plane tickets, you've arranged, uh, uh, arranged accommodation, you probably arranged a tour bus to bring all of your friends here. And by doing it soon, hopefully meant that a lot of people didn't have that to think about. And I think it's a very brave decision, and I hope they'll be back next year. Um, plans for the future, uh, to be in the studio more and to finally make some, some of my own music, uh, to do some more remixes of bands like Placebo, which I've just done, Soft Moon, Place to Brave Strangers, uh, Gazelle Twin, um, things like that, do a lot more of that and enjoy um, song-based remixes.